everybody, it's your favorite gentleman, Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Today, you all are in for a very, very special treat. Today, we have an incredible guest, and he is here to spill some foundational tea, some information that we all need to get to a better place, a better platform, and do better financially. So without further ado, I'm not going to hold this man back. Stay tuned, stay with us, stay engaged. You won't want to miss one second of this powerhouse speaker. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast Show, your host of the number one podcast coming to you live in America. It's your favorite gentleman. And today I have Mr. Robert Schultz, Certified Financial Planner. This man is powerful. He's the founder and president of the Schultz Wealth Limited Company. He's also named as Investopedia's list of top 100 financial advisors in 2019 and 2017. Mr. Rob is also a former instructor for the Certified Financial Planner Certification Program in the University of Texas at Arlington and also Texas Christian University. For more than 25 years, Mr. Rob's smart, no-nonsense budgeting and investing strategies have helped hundreds and thousands of everyday people take control of their money and attain real-world financial success. Help me welcome to the stage the incredible the amazing Mr. Rob Schultz. All right. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. Thank you for coming to the Gentleman Style Podcast stage, sir. We are excited, sir. Excited as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Diving right in, sir. I have to ask. I have to ask successful um, people. Successful people have habits. Successful people do things day in and day out every day, whether it be meditation, whether it be prayer, whether it be yoga. What is one thing that you do every day consistently that has led to your success? Well, one day should have a, a lot of that. Everything you just included for sure. You know, some quiet time, some prayer time, uh, get up and, and get ready to go. Um, I would say for me, I'm so fortunate that I get to do something that I'm passionate about. And and that's the thing that I can bring with me to the to work every single day is just that passion. And that helps me get get stuff done. So I would say just waking up and just knowing that that you're doing something that you feel like is important, that's helping other people, that um, that that you love, you know that that's what that's what makes the difference for me. Love it, <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. I love that. And sir, you have you you guys have to recognize this man the level of think and strategy 25 years of changing the financial landscape for hundreds and millions of americans and people worldwide but sir you have an incredible mind you could literally do anything you want who was someone that mentored you or someone that you admired that paved the way who's someone that you respected in the industry that that you took this path on the financial journey process there's not just one person. I mean, you know, when you, I, I can think of, I can think of so many people. I can't even, I can't name them fast enough uh, because that's, I think that's what it takes, you know, to, to really be able to be successful. Is, and first of all, is to recognize how you get there. You don't get there by yourself. You get there through, through a lot of, a lot of help. In my case, a lot of, a lot of help. Um, but, um, you know, my dad was a big mentor to me. Um, when I first came in, in the business, I had a, I had a great, great manager and a large financial services firm, Rich Kimmel, who's a great, great mentor to me. Uh, another incredible salesperson in, in the industry, more on the, on the large, uh, financial services side, this guy named Noel Bloss who talk about habits. That guy had habits. I mean, just <laughs> amazing I used to, I used to like try to, as a young guy, I used to try to compete and say, okay, I'm going to try to get to an appointment before Noel does. 
couldn't couldn't do it. There's no way he would always be there be- <laughs> before, prepared, ready to go. Because I think he woke up like I don't know three thirty in the morning or something. Just incredible. What? Um, so there's just been a lot of people like that 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 uh, that I I admire that uh, that took interest in helping me. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And that is true. That that is true. Successful people, just like we just talked about, have habits and, you know, just that grind and that hustle. He knew, he probably knew. And he was like, you know, this young, aspiring certified financial planner, this young man and, and family. Who else is closer to us than family? So kudos to dad. Kudos to dad. Big shout Love out to dad. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. One more round of applause. (laughs) Sir, we could not bring you on the show. You have a new book out, a unique book. This book talks about financial planning, and it's called Thoughts on Things Financial. Tell us, what should people expect from the release of this new book? Well, what to expect from Thoughts on Things Financial is just um, a basic guide um, I, I tried to do something really hard. I tried to try to build a book that could give you just kind of some base knowledge that escapes most people. I, I can't tell you last week I had a new client come in, great young couple, and they're super motivated and ready to go. And they have all these high level questions, you know, Roth IRA versus IRA versus, you know, all these technical things that we all read. We can all read it on the internet, but what we don't have is that base level knowledge, you know, that, that we need to be able to make the right decisions with all these different technical things. So expect a book that uh, doesn't have a lot of jargon in it, doesn't get into, you know, nitty gritty details, just kind of gives you a broad base all the way across all the things that you need to know to be financially successful. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Some of the things that you touch on in the book, you, you not only touch on the 3000 foot level, but you all, like you said, you bring things down to, um, broad terms to kind of give that foundational work. And so one of the things that you touch on in the book is how can people determine if they're a net spender or a net saver? Can you give us the juice behind that? How can someone figure out if they're a net spender or a net saver? Yeah, you bet. Thanks for bringing that up. I, I guess that's a term I made up because I people <laughs> people always ask about it and and at the time I was like oh, that's not that's not different is it but it, I guess it kind of is uh, but there really are there are different people I have four kids they're all different everybody's different as far as how they approach money and I think that they they fall in those two categories you know either either we tend to be a net spender which means that. We really, really like to spend, and that's what we enjoy about money. And so what that net means, net spender means that if you let yourself do that as much as you want, you're gonna be negative, right? You're not you're not gonna you're not gonna have eventually you're not gonna have enough money to have that much fun. <laughs> so so that's what a net spender is. And a net saver is somebody who really enjoys saving that's where they get their kicks for money. They think it's really, really fun to accumulate money and to invest it and do different things with it. And of course, in society, you know, we, we value that more because it, you know, that's how, that's how you get uh, wealthy over time. But, you know, that's just, that's just who we are. And I think a lot of times we just have to recognize who we are and then work through, like you said a while ago, habits and, and use tricks and different things to be able to make sure that, you know, we have the money to be able to do the things we want to do. Because even being a net, a net saver can be a problem. You know, you can, you can do that to the level that, you know, there's no fun at all in, in life. All you're doing is just worrying about your investments and letting money control you. Uh, so, so that's kind of, that's the concept. I hope that helps a little bit. That does. That does. That that's the foundation, right? That's at the core. That's the huge core right there. 
That's the foundational work that we have to figure out. You have to do the internal work when, especially when it comes to finance, especially when it comes to money, you have to know who you are and you need to know which side of the equation you are. And you notice you guys, you notice y'all, he didn't mention that either one was right or wrong. He's just saying, knowing who you are, know thyself. So that's what he's talking about there. Mr. Rob Schultz, y'all. We have a quick commercial break. You guys stay tuned. Stay with us. Stay engaged. We'll be right, right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level, and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new, an exciting guest to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Gentleman Style Podcast Show. You have the incredible Rob Schultz in your presence. And this man is phenomenal. He is leading the charge, leading the way on financial legacy. And he has a new book out, a new book that is paving the way for our financial future. It's called Thoughts on Things Financial. And it lays the core foundation as well as give us some insight on some things that we need to consider to get to a better financial state. Mr. Schultz, sir, thank you so much for joining us on Gentleman's Stock Podcast Show. Sir, this is prominent. You just broke down. You just explained what's the difference between a net saver and a net spender and know and di differentiating the difference between the two and knowing who you are in your financial journey. Sir, you remind me, this is a core concept. When I first got into finances and finding out who I was in the money game, um, I needed to, I listened to big gurus like yourself, like Dave Ramsey, who talks about um, saving and investing and paying off your debts. And he takes a very aggressive approach, um, to paying off debt, but you touch on this in your book and it's talking about, so, um, someone climbing out of debt while still saving. Can you share some of your tips that how you coach people to still pay off debt, but also save along the way? Yeah, you bet. Um, and this is just comes from actually you know, being in the practice of, of planning and, and helping, helping clients over, over many, many years, something I've noticed a trap that people fall into when they get that complete, just no debt gaze, as I like to call it. Uh, and all they're focused on is just this one thing, you know, they've got the blinders on. It's like debt, debt, debt. I'm going to pay off all debt. I don't care what kind of debt it is. I'm going to pay it off, you know, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Well, what happens when you have those blinders on is life. <laughs> life <laughs> is all around you happening, okay? And life has good things. Life has bad things. And when you are just focused on this one, one deal, time goes along, things start happening, and you are not prepared for it. Because this whole time that you've been just paying off debt, Guess what happens like right when you think you're there? An emergency or an opportunity, but more often it's an emergency that requires money. And what are you going to do? You're going to go into debt. You're going to cash out some money out of your 401k. You're going to do something, okay, bad to, to correct this situation. So my argument is, is that it's very important as you're going through life to keep, keep your eyes on everything. And, and make sure that you have a balanced approach to your finances. 
if you just focus on debt and then and then then let's say you do you go well i'm going to raise some cash it could be years before you actually start investing towards like your retirement or start trying to figure out how to get money together for your kids college and that time works against you there's the magic of time value money which i talk about in the book that you have to understand that requires us to pay attention to all this stuff at the same time which sounds exhausting, but that's what we have to do. We got to put in the work, y'all. Put yep. in the work. Got to put it in. And sir, sir, you brought up a unique point, and 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 I wanted to kind of double back and bring this back up when you talked about net saver and net spender. Couples, mm -hmm. married couples, right? What if the husband or the wife is a net spender and the and the husband is a saver? How do you teach couples um, to get on the same page about money? Okay, so first of all, if I have a couple in my office and both of them are net spenders or both of them are net savers, that would be rare because we generally <laughs> marry somebody who's very different than us and from a financial standpoint, that's what I usually see. I usually see one who's going to be really engaged in maybe the investing and the saving and all that. And the other one's maybe running, run, more running the the day-to-day -day spending and so forth of the household. One's worried about the long term. One's more worried about the, the current, you know, and I would say that that's fantastic because then you have the best of both worlds. You know, you have you have a team approach. You have two people that look at something maybe a little bit differently and a little bit more objectively. And together they can collaborate and come up with better answers than they could by themselves. So I say it's great. If, if your spouse is different than you, celebrate that. It's a, it's a good thing. So it's not a bad thing. It's no. not a bad thing at all. Not at all. How do we, so now we've, you've, you've helped couples, you've helped families, you've helped people figure out how to get on the same page financially. You've helped them do the legwork on the inside through the book. How do you, where do people start when they want to talk about money with their children? How do you mm. bring that up? Yeah, that's, um, that's one of my favorite topics um, because as parents, I think out of our just extreme love for our kids, we screw this up all the time. OK, <laughs> because what, what we want, what do we want? We want our kids not to make the same mistakes we made. Right. Sure. So what do we do? We try to control them. We try to force them. We try to tell them step by step what to do. And that is that is not the way to approach this, uh, because the, the world goes on. The world changes. Everything changes. Everybody's different. Everybody needs to probably learn these things on their own and sometimes maybe even the hard way. So I think that with kids, you, you kind of give them a little bit of rope. You kind of give them the opportunity to, you know, go out there and make some decisions with their allowance or with their money and maybe make some bad decisions with their money. You know, little ones while they're still in the house, because if you don't, then later when they're not in your house, that's when they're going to make these mistakes and you're not there to help them at that point. So, um, so I like, you know, just giving, giving them the opportunity to make their own decisions on how they invest. And one of the best examples of that is one of my kids is super giving and I, she, she would give away all of her money, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and, you know, she's learned how to couch that at this point. But, you know, I thought that was kind of cool that she just, that's her heart, you know, and she loves that. And that's a big part of what's important to her. And she was able to learn that because she was given kind of the opportunity to make some choices early on, as an example. A heart of gold. So you see, y'all, that heart of gold, it's in the blood. It's in the family. It <laughs> runs through and through. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you and I thank you for that. I, I you are the second financial expert that I've heard mention, you know, because a lot of times we kind of hold tight to our kids. Right. We hold our kids tightly and we kind of just keep it close to the chest and we don't want to release the reins because it's like you don't know what you're doing. I'm going to hold on to the finances and I'm going to be on all the accounts and you're I'm going to be involved in all the financial decisions. And, and you're right. 
loosen the rope. Let them go out. Give them enough rope. They're still under your roof, right? Where you can nurture, you can guide, and they're under your stewardship. But you loosen the rope. And eventually, or hopefully, as they go off to college or as they go off to develop their own lives and families, they'll have the entire rope. And they'll be able to stand because you've you've given them enough play and enough slack to learn along with your stewardship. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. And, you know, also along those lines, the other mistake we make is we don't share our mistakes with our kids either. We, we try mm. to put on this persona that, oh, well, you know, your mom and I, we we never had challenges with money. You know, it's all been it's all been just super smooth. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. You know, uh, I think it's important for us to also convey to him that, hey, you know, man, I've really this debt thing really was challenging for me at some point. I understand. And and that's the way to obviously be real and be able to have, you know, ongoing good conversations, even maybe after they're adults. So true. So true. Rob Schultz, y'all. We have one more quick commercial break. You guys stay tuned, stay with us, stay engaged. We'll be right, right back. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. Hey everybody, we are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We have the amazing Mr. Rob Schultz spilling the tea on his new book, Getting to be a better financial place called the book is called Thoughts on Things Financial. And he just laid some foundational work on what we need to do to not only in our relationships and our marriage and getting on the same money page, but also talking to our kids about how to incorporate finances into the household. And that is so true. I I, I remember growing up that and you hear about it often where money is just kind of like you you the bills are just kind of like this secret right you 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 stumble upon a bill and the parents just are like you know they snatch it out their hands and it's like go play go outside don't worry about this you're too young and you never you know have the conversation you never have that hard conversation and not necessarily hard but just the talks around money is just so taboo and so you lay down the foundation on how to get through some of those barriers and those core functions. T tell me, who who should read this book? Who's a good um, audience for this book? Is it, it the financial beginner? Is it intermediate? Is there the, or is this for the advanced? I'd say it's probably not for the advanced. Or I don't know. It, it doesn't have an age limit on it because I think there's a lot of really important stuff in there for um, you know what we kind of call the late retirement bloomer, somebody who you know, gets, is a little bit older, but hasn't really started, can get a lot of great knowledge from this book and, and, and just take a lot of stress off their shoulders. Somebody in that situation needs somebody to tell them, Hey, you know, it's going to be okay. You bear down now, but it's going to be okay. This book tries to do that. But the real sweet spot is probably, you know, that young family, you know, that, uh, <laughs> I remember those years, you know, the kids are, are a little I'm exhausted all the time because, you know, your career is probably at a challenging point, um, you know, raising the kids and then this finance thing. Right. And you're trying to figure all this out. That's the sweet spot for the book. That's where uh, the feedback I've gotten from people have been kind of in that range. And it's just it, it gives them peace knowing that they're going to be OK as long as they just as long as they just do these things. And they'll be all right. That that's probably where the sweet spot is. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Sir, 2020 was a dumpster fire. 2020 has thrown us through a loop. And we had some this was a tumultuous year. And one of the biggest questions, there are a lot of people facing some retirement questions and some retirement problems. And so how can someone is it 
they always tell you retirement is a timing game. The sooner you get in, the better off you'll be. But how can someone build on their retirement? What things can, what steps can they do to either re start their retirement planning or rebuild that retirement um, planning because of what COVID-19 and the pandemic put us through? Absolutely. You know, the first thing that we should learn from the pandemic is how important cash is. There's a whole chapter on it. It's it's what gets you through things that you couldn't foresee. Uh, and, you know, that's what, that's what, if you had cash available, then you didn't have to necessarily liquidate investments or dip into your 401k and things like that. That's what helps. So that's the first thing you go, I got to have cash. Okay. And that's what gets me through these things. But now you're on the back side of this and maybe there's been some damage. You know, of course, I've been through this with clients before. Uh, and he, you just have to reassess, you know, you just have to be able to, to sit down and say, you know what, this is, this is where I am right now and do some planning, you know, try to, try to forecast, you know, where may, maybe this did add a year or two or so to your, your working life. Well, determine what that is, determine what you need to do, uh, to, to make that, make that a reality when it's going to happen. Um, but I will say that uh, most of our clients came through really well just because uh, if, if you didn't panic and cash out, then even at the low point, we were running uh, retirement plans on our clients at the low points when after the market had dropped, you know, 30, really? almost 40 percent. We'd say they were worried and and we would sit there. We already have plans on them, right? Financial plans all all built out. And they're in their computer models is what they are. And we would, we ran them for a, tons of them. We just said, Hey, let's rerun your plan. Let's see where we are. You wouldn't believe it, but most of them still ran really well, even at those, at those lower levels. So it, and of course it bounced back very quickly. So if, if you did, but it was surprising to me, even, you know, that just one year for most of our clients didn't make didn't make a big difference. Now, if that was the year you were going to retire, then yeah, maybe some things changed. But for most people that were still a few years out and so forth, it was just a blip on the radar. You know, uh, of course, if you lost your job, some things like that, certainly those are um, extenuating circumstances that were a challenge. Uh, but just from straight retirement planning and market and so forth, uh, shouldn't really didn't have much of an effect on, on most of our clients. This is the, the last point I wanted to touch on because it was so, so crucial. The stock market um, has been in fluctuation, but you teach in the book some smart risk um, management tips about the stock market to increase your chances of success. Can you give us some of the tea? You don't have to spill all the tea, but if you could share some nuggets or two from the book on how to mitigate or some smart things that they can do to invest in the stock market with some, some good success habits. Yeah, you know, so the book goes through and tries to help explain, you know, what's what a stock is, first of all. And that's something that escapes most people. And I try to explain in a way that where it makes sense, where you go, oh, well, that makes sense. And that sounds like something smart to invest in. And it really is, you know, your your stock piece, you know, owning pieces of these companies is is your is your best bet on what we call beating inflation and getting a real rate of return, which is the key. You know, there's inflation, which has come up here recently. And then there's the return that you try to make above it. You Absolutely. don't have to hit a home run here. Okay. You just have to make a real rate of return over the inflation rate. And that means that you can have a lot of safety in your portfolio too, which means, you know, you have cash, you have bonds, you have these different pieces and, and you spread yourself out. You spread all your risk around. You know, you don't want to just buy one thing. You want to be super spread out. And that way, you're going to have some winners, some losers, but you'll be the real rate of return, which is all you're really looking for. Makes sense. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Thank you for sharing that nugget. That is what I'm talking about, y'all. One more round of applause. Mr. 
Mr. Rob, do you have any final nuggets, any tidbits, any words of encouragement for someone who's on the fence don't know what to do they've gone through a, a tremendous financial crisis they may be lost their job they may be dealing with um loss of revenue or several streams of income what advice or tips would you give to that young man or that young woman on the fence about getting to a better financial place wow that's a great question because i run into people like this all the time as you can imagine and the main thing that you need to take into account when you're in that situation is that all is not lost. You know, where you are is where you're probably supposed to be. And there's a way out. And all you really have to do is you just have to stare it in the face and work at it and come up with the solutions. Uh, that's, that's what we do in my office, you know, all day, every day. But what we want to do as humans is we, is we want to not think about it. And we want to maybe cast our eyes in another direction. Don't do that. Stare your problems straight in the face. Try to understand them. And as humans, we're able to come up with some incredible solutions. We're very creative beings. So just look at it and figure it out. It'll be fine. How can we connect with you? How can we grow with you? How can we learn more and get our copy of our book? Of course. Uh, you can get the book anywhere books are sold. Amazon, you name it. Uh, it's again, it's called thoughts on things financial. Uh, you can contact me through my website, which is, uh, schultzwealth.com. Uh, you can also go to my Facebook group, which is called thoughts on things financial, and it's a closed group. So just ask to be, be, uh, added. And that's a place where we just connect and talk about this stuff. So feel free to contact me any, any way you want. Love to, love to visit. Love it. Love it. Check it out, y'all. It's SchultzWealth.com. That's S-C-H-U-L-Z Wealth.com. And that Facebook group is Thoughts on Things Financial. Get that copy of that book. It's on Amazon or wherever books you like to purchase are sold. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Thank you for taking your time being on the Gentleman Style Podcast message. You have served my audience well. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Marcus. Lots of fun. Best of Absolutely. luck to everybody out there. We will. We will. Thank you all, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message was impactful and insightful, and I hope you learned something today. Like always, I end every show. Take care of your friends, take care of your families, and take care of business. This is Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show and Mr. Rob Schultz signing off. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>